three, two, one. Hello, everyone. You listen to a Coffees with Toffees podcast. I will be your host, Flub, and this is the Brewmasters Draft, a show where we talk a little bit about Dota and a little bit about beer. As always, I'm joined today with my ever talented co host, Kimbrel. Kimbrel, how are you doing today? Doing good. It feels like it's been a while. I don't know if it's because we're doing this on Friday and we're going through the entire week and then doing it, but it definitely feels like it's been longer than a week. <laughs> yeah, it feels like it's been too long. It feels like it's, it's, uh, you're right. When you have all that stuff going throughout the week and you have so much, it's not more to talk about. You're just like kind of, sometimes there, there's those weekends where nothing happens and it goes by really quick. So you don't really get that same feeling as you did when yeah. you are having the entire week, normal week of, you know, work or school or whatever. So, you know, it has a different feel to it now. I, I kind of like yeah. it. I do too. So, but I'm doing well. Um, I got my hair cut, got it a little too short. I asked the lady to, I just want to trim and she wanted me to go to specifics. And I was like, just give me what I got last time. Like, oh, <laughs> we don't have that stuff in there. We don't have all the measurements and stuff. I was like, great. Just cut it. <laughs> 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 and, um, yeah, so they cut it really short and, Fiance is a little irritated. She didn't want it this short for the wedding, but I got a week to grow it out. So yeah. <laughs> you gotta get like Rogaine just just for your hair and just rub it on or something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that'd be that'd be pretty funny. Uh, that, <laughs> it, it's good though. That I mean, it's still it doesn't look that bad, man. It's just a little short. Not that bad. Yeah, it's a little short. But how are you? How are you doing? How's your week been? Uh, it's been actually it's been kind of up and down. There's been some like family stuff going on. Um, Mom's pretty sick at this point, but you know it's it's turned around at this point, and it's really good. So you know, I haven't been able to play as much Dota as I normally would because obviously there's things like that that happen in life. Real life happens, and you can't always get to play Dota as much as you want to. That and finals were this week, so you know it was yeah. a little bit of a tough week. Uh, I'm I'm glad that the show has come, and I can sit back and have a <laughs> beer and relax at this point, man. That's for sure. But I'm glad to. Hey, your mom's doing better. That sounds sounds good. Sounds good. I didn't know that she was not doing well. Um, yeah, I generally don't want to like try to bring people down and like send right. out tweets like you know, hey, this <laughs> is it. She has a knee replacement and she had an infection in her knee, and it's like, yeah, it's pretty pretty nasty if you let the infection go for a while. And mm -hmm. she did. She didn't even know she had it. So. Um, but it's it's good now. Everything's all all better, and hopefully in time for Mother's Day. So you know. Yeah. Did you get the the sweet compendium this I, last week? I did. I did. Thanks to at Fafnir. Uh, Fafnir gave it to me. Uh, there was also another person that sent up on Twitter. I'm going to go look him up right now because I want to give him his due diligence. Who said, "Hey man, if it, no one has bought it yet for you, I'm I'm totally down to buy it for you." That's so. Cool. Um, we got fans that love us, man. We got fans that love us, and it's great. Uh, so. Yeah, I've had a good time with the compendium. It's been a lot of fun. It's uh, the I did the Slark Riptide thing, and I was like so pumped, thinking I was gonna get <laughs> not the you know the grand prize, but I was like, oh, I could get like two thousand points plus or something, and that's seven hundred and fifty. I was my pumpedness was easy, like very. <laughs> Uh, taken down quite a bit after <laughs> after doing that. Yeah, I think I did the same thing, man. <laughs> I would like you used to do the Lena one where it was like the fireballs and you had more than one chance. Well, the Slark one, I only is. I don't know if that was like that for everybody else, but I got one chance and I was like, "That's it. That's all the hype. That's it." <laughs> I was like, "Great." <laughs> and you, you got the lowest one too, I assume, just like that. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I didn't. I don't know the numbers on it, but yeah, I was. I was so disappointed by they say that you get like a free item for like 10 people a week or something so it's like kind of cooler at some points but yeah you're right i feel like the it was more of a thing that you got to a certain point when you hit levels so it was kind of like a more fun activity i believe last time than it just randomly happening once every couple of weeks or was it once every couple of weeks i forget there's so um, many compendiums yeah i don't remember how often it was but yeah it's still, it was good. It was, uh, it's fun to have something like that. I still, I'm liking that they still give a reason to buy the compendium early so that you can, like, get, like, the levels up as, yeah. as much as, like, getting the compendium later and buying a bunch of money is 
nice for them. I like that they are going to help out the real fans who are there from the beginning. So Yeah. I just had a guy in the game I just lost in who had a 2,000, level 2,000 <laughs> compendium already. That's a lot of money. And then he came in, he dropped a 1,000 uh, share tokens and doubled down and everything. And I was like, man, you're going to be so disappointed because... Our hard carry is a blood seeker, and this is just, we're not gonna. This isn't working out, <laughs> and we ended up losing. I felt so bad for him, but you know, if you spend that much money, I guess it doesn't really matter. <laughs> He's already got the the freaking Aegis thing or whatever. Like, that's a lot of money. There's no way in hell. Like, I'm at level 95, and I've spent too much money. <laughs> right, because it's like what? It's 25 levels is 10 bucks or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, I wish I was good at math real quick, just have a calculator by my side. But, the yeah, that's just, oh, my God, it's so much money, man. <laughs> like, that's more than $500. We'll just put it that way. That's a lot of money. <laughs> to drop on one week for, like, little, like, I, I appreciate, you know, going towards Dota and everything, and that's that's important. But, man, I... When you're, when you're in the lower MMR brackets, too, it's just like, why, I guess? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, it's I appreciate it. Like you said, it's cool. It's going towards the it goes it's go it goes towards Dota too. I mean, that's great. So yeah, it's and it's like I, I don't know. For me, I look at another game that I enjoy a lot, and like generally, I'll spend like sixty dollars is my max on like something yeah. for a game. And oh my god, they're spending five hundred, not even on the game, just on like cosmetic stuff for the game. Right, just, oh, and like half god. of them you don't even get to keep. <laughs> like the act, like oh uh, your your healing or your TP thing or something like whatever the effects are you don't even get to keep them so like I don't know it's just crazy to me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, real quick, I want to say Kellen Foster, the, his name's Foster Kellen on Twitter. Thank you for sending that out to me and saying that you would you would be willing to buy it. Appreciate that a lot. Wanted to give you a shout out. All right, so. We got a brand new draft. We got a Kimbrel draft. Let's let's hear it, buddy. I want I want to hear your picking and banning. Just go on your tirade for like tw oh man beers, man. The the petting that Kimbrel just did on the beer and re reminded me we have not talked about our beers yet. So Kimbrel, what are you drinking today, bud? Okay, so I didn't get the beer that I wanted. I went to liquor store, and they actually had the beer that I had during my bachelor party. Uh, it's the same brand Iron Monk as last or. Last week or the week before, whichever week that was. Uh, but it's their milk stout. And I wanted to try it when I wasn't partying. <laughs> I wanted to try it as like a, just a casual beer, you know, just kind of sitting at home instead of out. Like everything tastes good whenever you're out partying. So I wanted to try it here. And yeah, that's what I got. What about you? Well, I would disagree. Not everything tastes good. Like still, okay, well, it sucks, man. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, once you hit a certain point, it's like... It's water, but it doesn't yeah. like taste good. <laughs> nah, it's cool. It's cool. Uh, so, I'm drinking Campside Seasonal IPA. Um, it's a it's from Upland Brewery. It's pretty popular around here. It's actually brewed in um, Bloomington, Indiana. It's like one of the only cities that people know outside of Indiana. So, it's a college town. It's where IU is. Um, Indiana University. The party school. Uh, and we have, it's, it's like, it's pretty good. It's only 4.5 AB, ABV. Um, it's still an IPA, but it's like lesser on the hops than normal. So it's not too bad. And it tastes like, I mean, campside, that is a good name for it. Cause it has like a toasty campfire taste. Like the smell mm -hmm. on your clothes kind of smell, kind of tastes like that. It's weird. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing yet. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to drink more and see if I like it. Yeah. Eh, but but it's cool. It's cool. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, all right. So now I am not going to screw anything up. Now it's your turn to go into the draft, talk about picking and banning, go through the whole thing, sh reveal your, your secrets to me, and then we'll talk about what I can do to try to counteract you. All right. So <clears throat> I think I need to... I need to get a team or something, just a bunch of random people, because I really just need to start drafting, because I'm just kind of, I've been slacking just playing all pick, and oh, I don't know. It's, it's so it took me a little bit to actually get motivated to come up with a draft, and so I finally came up with one. Uh, as usual, 
for me, I always start out like I'm gonna do a straight like the one week I was like I'm just gonna do a, a early roast draft and I ended up changing it and like trying to balance it out. That's kind of what I did here and I started out uh, wanting to just have a push lineup, just a strong push split push lineup. And I kind of I've changed some picks originally, uh, not the picks that are on the screen though. Um, but yeah, so I changed it from like an all push to like a kind of more balanced. They're still push, but it's still a little more balanced. So I put Vengeful X, Terrorblade, Ogre, and Death Prophet on a team. So obviously, Terrorblade and Death Prophet approach pretty well. Um, I feel like it could be pretty straightforward. You could just go with the axe off lane, DP mid, and the other three in the safe lane. Although I really like the idea of doing it the other way around and putting the Terra Blade, Vengeful, and Ogre in an aggressive try with the axe and the safe lane. In my opinion, I feel like that's a strong aggressive try lane. If you start out with meta on Terra Blade, you have, by level two or three, you have two stuns with Vengeful and Ogre, two slows with Ogre and then Terra Blade Reflection, minus armor, and then all three of those heroes hit pretty damn hard. Plus, Ogre's just supposed to, like, he's able to run at people because the armor and regen that he has. So if any team tries to get aggressive back, like terribly, all he has to do is just metamorphosis and then people die. So I just feel like that's a, I feel like it's a really strong, strong lineup, like a tri-lane. I feel like it would do pretty well um, and like a, against other teams' carries. And then they might switch it up and they might just do an aggro try against Axe, which he can just go jungle if he needs to, or, you know, Axe is one of those heroes that can go jungle. Um, so yeah, so the capability for, for pushing uh, obviously depends on the Death Prophet and the Terror Blade. Terror Blade Metamorphosis is huge for pushing, but he doesn't necessarily always need it up to push. Like he's able to split push pretty well even without it, and also with a Bloodlust, the Walking Bloodlust machine, <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, I like the idea. I I started to think about my original draft and how I didn't have much team fight. It was a lot of single target stuff, and so I started thinking, you know. Because uh, I had a Legion in there as well, and so I started thinking, you know, I want to change this up a little bit. And I thought about putting Magnus in there. The like we saw, I think at Kiev with the Magnus uh, Terror Blade just pushing, like there was just an insane amount of power. Plus the blood bloodlust, like that hero is just melting down your towers. Um, I just didn't like the idea of having so many cooldown dependent like abilities, like with RP. And then Death Prophet all, and then Metamorphosis and all that. So I went with Axe, who has a 10 second cooldown on his call, um, and it essentially not. It essentially does what Magnus RP does. Like it's there's pros and cons to both, obviously. Um, so yeah, and then my bands were Magnus, who we we're just talking about, uh, Timbersaw, Legion, Sniper, and Naga. Uh, the reason reason why I banned those heroes, I feel like. Magnus with Empower, or Magnus with Empower on any other hero versus Illusions kind of sucks, like, for the Illusion hero, um, and then also Magnus just, it's pretty popular, he kind of fell off a little bit at Kiev, but he's still pretty popular, he's a pretty popular hero, also he provides the ability to have these big plays and then pushing high ground versus him is, it's pretty scary. Um, Timbersaw, he, for the first, uh, the early game to mid game, the main thing you're wanting to do, I think, you're just wanting to split push. You want to have your Death Prophet with three other heroes while your Terror Blade is able to split push another lane. And Death Prophet all goes off, and you have your Axe with Blink, and he's able to initiate if he needs to while you focus down the tower. And that all just rips through that tower while Terror Blade's in another lane, ripping through another tower. And that's the, that's the main motive. And Timbersaw could easily go, instead of dealing with the Death Prophet lane, he could easily go to the uh, where Terror Blade's at. Take on all those illusions, kill Terrorblade. It's just, it's, it's not a lot. It's not fun going against that, especially as an illusion hero. Uh, Legion, same reason. Also, you don't want her being able to dual Terrorblade whenever he's alone, especially in the early game. Sniper, um, high ground, high ground versus sniper is hell. I, I would put, I would put. Oh, you. Oh, you're... what's up? Your mic went out, cut out right after you said his, his hell. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was just say that high grounding versus him sucks. I would really hate it, and especially whenever your initiation is vengeful swap and axe call, like, you're, and you're not able to get up on him. You're, 
that's the only way to really get to him. So dealing with that, especially once he has like a even just a Maelstrom or a Magellar, like that's a pain in the butt to push up high ground against. Um, and then Naga, I, she split pushes, and even though you're wanting to split push too, like she would be able to by the late game. By the time you get to the late game, if you do get there, um, she is a pain to deal with. I feel like at the late game, you want your Terra Blade with an ogre and and the rest of your team because he's able to just rip down towers and you don't want him vulnerable to other to being picked off and eventually you're going to need to group up to take a roche and then push and um and naga is able to just be annoying and keep out those lanes like keep those lanes pushed out and everything like that and she split pushes just as like terribly does however it's it's not as she doesn't melt through towers as fast as he does but she still is very annoying to deal with also song uh, she could start Song once DP starts her ult. You can set up to just take down the DP, and she completely wastes her ult if you're able to kill her once she's interrupted with the song. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's that's what I have. I just talked for like 10 minutes, but <laughs> that's uh, that's what I came up with today. I kind of, like I said, I changed it up a little bit to start, and then just kind of came up with this draft. I kind of like the idea of it. Um, but yeah, what do you got for me? Okay, so... I like the beginning of the draft. I have a lot to say, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna like say a point, and then kind of we're gonna go back and forth here a little bit. So, the idea that I have here is, I like the guts of what your draft is trying to accomplish. I like a lot of different things. I think Vengeful Ogre and Terrorblade is an incredibly scary lane. Not only is it an incredible scary lane, like you said, you can just buff the Terrorblade, and if a, if you have a bloodlusted Terrorblade. It's super, super nasty, and you can take down the towers. So if they do just give up the lane, which they're probably going to versus it, then they're going to lose tower, at least first tier tower, and they're going to have to have a response not to lose second tier tower. If you can get those before the 15 minutes, which is definitely possible with this lineup, then it's going to be very hard for the other team's off lane to do anything. Now, the on the flips, on the other side of it, though, I think that Death Prophet is kind of... You maybe had the idea before, and she kind of doesn't fit, I feel like, in this draft. Because a lot of the problems that you have is that, okay, you have Axe, and Axe has no problem. He can go to the jungle, or he can stay up top. Either way is fine. But if I have any way to counter the Axe by himself with just one hero, then I kind of get more out of my lineup than you, than you do. And if I can get like some way to punish the Axe and force him into the jungle while having my supports m move out and just have someone solo farm up top then it is kind of hard for dp to be able to deal with that harassment and you will have to pull over the ogre to mid to help out the, d the dp and yes there's that really good combination of trying to harass someone out you can kind of go down that path with your build by having the ogre and the death prophet down there but then your off lane is uh, then your safe lane isn't as scary as it once was and if it's not that scary, then I feel like it kind of takes away that point of your draft because that's the strongest thing you have in your draft is, okay, we're going to take all your towers down at bottom. And you're trying to pressure mid with a DP pick, which is really good. But you have to have, like, a DP has no way to stop. Let's say we had a Spirit Breaker. If you have, like, some way to dive her and just give that constant pressure in the game, whether it's... You know, Spirit Breaker or Ricky or something like that. Then the ogre has to rotate. So, I like some of the idea of the draft, and I actually think that the axe pick. I didn't think of it. It's really smart because you have that, like you did, like you said, that shorter cooldown. I feel like though, the Magnus fits the team better. Like if you took out the Death Prophet, then that would be one less ability for a really long cooldown. You put someone else mid, mm -hmm. and then you have the ability to get a. a amazing ultimate and work with Terrorblade like you were saying before and like Axe is good but he doesn't really get that much better with an Ogre or Avenge or Terrorblade like he's like one of the best initiators and he's a crazy strong pick right now I just I, I feel like if there is a problem where I can kind of get him then then that's kind of the, the biggest hole in your draft and I would kind of play around that and the first way I'd play around that is by picking Ursa I think Ursa would be a huge problem. You could destroy the Death Prophet if he gets up on top of her. Um, you know, Axe can't. I mean, he can jump him, but 
I mean, as long as you go more into your Fury Swipes than you do into your Slow, which you just don't necessarily have to have a draft that's built around the Slow, and he can kind of rip through your team, um, and kind of give you the, the, the situation of, okay, Axe has to go to the jungle at this point. Is that a hero that you are considering of banding, or would you just... Like, especially if you pick at first phase. Like, if you mm. if you have... If you have first pick, and you pick Venge, then I could pick the Axe on my team. And you've banned out both Magnus and Timbersaw. If you ban out both those guys, I can pick up the Axe in my two-round two pick, and then you have nothing to pick up there. Whereas, if you have it... If you get their second pick, and I pick someone like CM, and then you pick Venge and Axe, then I can pick up the Ursa at that point. So it's like... I kind of see what you're trying to go for. I feel like if you're going to pick up Axe, you have to pick it up early. I think you have to ban out maybe an Ursa in the very first phase. I don't know. That's That was my thoughts. Yeah, I get what you're saying. I definitely, I, I do agree with that. Ursa was a, a hero that I thought about, especially with the Axe pick. Mm -hmm. um, the ban order is kind of, I think, sloppy. Uh, the I just, You kind of put yourself in a bind whenever you're picking the axe second because like you mentioned and then you ban the magnus uh, like you uh the magnus is pretty it's pretty popular and i feel like that's one of the bands you're going to want to put up first if you're not going to pick him um i don't know i do like the idea of picking up the magnus um if you get rid of the dp and you go into like a lena per se and you go into a right click instead of just all the magic damage in the world um, and you go with like say, uh, if you want to go with a Deso build, or you don't even need to go right click anyway. You got a Terra Blade, but still, if you if you go into something, you go into Team Fight, you get your Bloodstone, Shadow Blade, Yules, whatever you need. And with a Magnus, I feel like that's just as good or, or better. Um, so I do agree with that because I really like the Magnus Terra Blade. And if you take out that long ultimate cooldown from Death Prophet for mid, and you put like a Lena or something like that, or a Quap or something, uh, it's it's a little different. So I do agree with that. Okay. Yeah. Um, what And I like your Legion ban, but it's not a first phase mm -hmm. ban. And that's yeah, I would move the... Sorry, I would move the Legion to fir the first phase, especially if we picked up the Magnus. But um, And I actually thought originally I had Timber and Legion switched. Um, but when I started looking at my what I have written down, I definitely didn't. But yeah, I would, I would ban Legion, especially right now. She's pretty popular right now, surprisingly. Like, that kind of was a surprise. I think, I think it was Kiev when she started becoming really popular, especially there towards the end. Um, so yeah, she would be a first phase ban for sure. I think I would switch her in Timber. If I kept the lineup that I have, I would switch her in Timber on bans. Mm -hmm. So That makes sense. So if you're looking at... All right, so you got, you're going to switch up those bans. Legion's, Legion's more of a problem. And I completely agree. Legion is a horrible problem for Terrorblade. Just her call, taking out the illusions... Um, and I mean, honestly, being able to dual Death Prophet is crazy good because if you get that ability of getting the blade mail, the spirits are going to hit her. Your Legion is going to outtake the Death Prophet in that situation for sure. Um, so yeah, it's uh, solid ban really. And Timber Saw once again is also a really solid ban, especially if versus an Axe and a um, and a Terror Blade because obviously the magic damage output, the AOE magic damage. The ability to just, you know, zap those strength heroes with Ogre and, and Axe. And Ogre has no real answer for him. So it's it's a good, solid ban. So I think that, the, that you're still down the right path. One other hero that I think could be a serious problem for your draft is E.T. E.T. has the ability to... I, I he's It's weird. I haven't seen him at all lately. Maybe he's been picked a little bit this week. I haven't been able to keep up with the tournaments as much just because there's been so many. Um, and, you know, his, his ability of being able to lower everyone's armor, he's a classic counter to, to Terra Blade. Yeah. Also, uh, also stops blinks with his spirit. Right. Uh, yeah, he's, I mean, I don't... Uh, Do you think he's strong enough, is, though? No, no, I don't. He used to yeah. be. Now, I just don't. I really like the hero. He is, um, he was one of my favorites to play for a long time, especially, like, he and Shadow Demon were my favorite to play right before they got popular. I know that's not like a hipster or whatever, but right before they got super big, they were my favorites. And then uh, 
they got really big and then other Titans just kind of disappeared. But I do agree with you. It is an issue. Um, is somebody going to think to pick Elder Titan? If I'm a pro, if we're in pro, possibly. If we're in like 82L, probably not. Yeah. Especially with the because the reason why everybody picked him when I mean, he was popular is because he was popular. But now it's like people completely forget about the hero and let's say random him and all pick or something. Yeah. Um, but it would be it could be an issue. Yes, if they if they did pick him, I just don't think he's ban worthy. I think that. Okay, so if he's not ban worthy, that's kind of takes care of all the problems in that section. Now, I kind of had a different thought of where could, a different problem could form. I like your draft, and I like what you're doing with you know this very push heavy lineup. But you didn't ban out Coddle. And if you have a Coddle on the enemy team, that they can really punish that you know three man push. Like Coddle can rotate down to bottom once he hits level three. Kind of guarantee that they can't get that tier two. It kind of mess up your plans in general. So yeah. you could maybe go into a Ricky or someone that has sight, like Ricky, you know, Io with his little little spirits running around, Bounty Hunter, these guys that have these invisible ways to kind of scout people out or these really long-range affecting ways to kind of scout people out. I think it's really... I think that'd be the best way to, to do it. And with Ogre being a later-on pick, you can definitely have that you could definitely pick up a ricky later once again though it would definitely have to be a picking order type thing because if that yeah. happened let's say i got that ursa again man one of my favorite ways to counter your draft is go ursa spirit breaker like spirit breaker would answer any anybody that that would that's there like uh ricky any of those guys really he just dives on top of them and spirit breaker puts a lot of pressure on that dp and if you can pressure out that DP, that's that's a major problem like we were talking about before. So if we have like a Spirit Breaker or a Slaughter, you know, someone that has that potential of jumping in with them, be real VP style draft here and just jump on, in on top of you. I think that could be some problems there that like if you have that combination, right, of Coddle and that person. So you can take care of the push and then you take care of the guy that's split pushing all by himself. Um just a thought i i don't know i don't think it's worth the bands though in that type of situation i think really once again it's kind of one of those things that like dp is the problem so do you think it's a problem or would you switch your hero out mid or what, what, what's the what's your thought process here okay so after talking with you about it i think i would change up all that with one hero um maybe two how, but the picking order, I would change at least once. And what I think I would do, um, though I know some people aren't a big fan of picking your supports uh, first two picks, uh, PPD, for example, as somebody that's talked about that, he absolutely hates it. Um, I think I would switch the Axe, maybe even Axe Terrible. I could just do that, honestly. I could just switch those two. But I think I would switch the Axe Ogre. Um, that way I'm able to save my offlane a little later, which is something I typically don't do. But as you've mentioned, um, I don't know. That doesn't really solve my problem because I'm, if I'm going to first fan Magnus, I don't know. All I know <laughs> is the hero, like like you mentioned, Death Prophet's definitely the issue. Um, Honestly, I have, one, order... I have one tweak to your draft that I think could be incredible. Okay, I think it's okay. a really good guts, man. I think Shakira mid is, is your play. Oh, okay. Obviously, you watched Navi today. And... <laughs> Guilty. Guilty. Um, but, I mean, look at your draft. Like, you have you have Axe. Axe, Axe Jakiro is an incredible combo. You just jump on some, jump on their team, call everyone, and then Jakiro lays waste to them. Uh, Jakiro is an incredible pusher. Gives you that split-pushing lineup. That, you know, puts a lot of pressure mid. He's hard to gank for an intelligence hero, but can still harass out. Keep something available. I, like, I mean, just looking at your draft at this point, like, oh, it's so good. And then I'm getting into other other heroes. I was actually going to talk about how Templar Assassin and OD could be problems for your draft. But, dude, versus Jakiro, bring it on. Yeah, no, I... I'm all down for putting heroes like that mid. Like when Navi picked it today, that was the one game I've been able to watch. And when they picked it versus Empire today, I was like, "Looks like I'm staying on Twitch and I'm continuing to watch this game because that's awesome." I love, I love putting heroes like that mid. And if it, 
uh, oh, when was it? Was it TI? I think it was TI when uh, the old DC picked it. Mm-hmm. It worked for 30 minutes and then they fell off. But you have a Terra Blade and you're essentially playing four protect one and you're still able to push but you get, because Jakiro pushes pretty freaking fast um, along with Vengeful or whatever. I mean, I and with your creep pushing ability and then with the Jakiro, like those four can push a tower pretty fast while Terra Blade does this thing. So, I mean... Let's, yeah, let's get weird. Let's put Jakiro there instead of Death Prophet. I mean, I think that's, especially at last pick, like, that throws so many people off, I think, at, at, at first. And then they'll be like, you know, oh, obviously it's a Jiro mid. But, yeah, I like it. Also, he's able to kite out uh, certain heroes, like you mentioned, like TA or like an Ursa. Like, his slow and everything like that, and you're preventing him from being able to blink. Like, I like it. So I'm down with, and also you're taking a really long cooldown hero, to Jakiro, <laughs> if he maxes, um, oh, is it Breathe Fire? No, it's not Breathe Fire. There's His... dual, dual Breath, Breathe Fire, uh, there's Macro Pyre. Is that what you're talking about? Or... No, Breathe Fire. It's the one that pushes towers or whatever. So you're going from the long the long cooldown ultimate that pushes towers from Death Prophet to, is it, is it, is it Breathe Fire? I don't know what it is. I'm going to check it right now. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead with your thoughts. Anyway, if it's brief fire, it's it's a like a four second cooldown, and you're able to just continue to just hit a tower with it, and uh, the towers melt pretty fast to it. And if somebody tries to initiate on your Jakiro, you have an axe, a vengeful to swap them out, an ogre. You have plenty to deal. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think I, I like it. I like the idea of it. We also have it's called liquid fire. Um, liquid fire. Young terms wrote in chat. It would be good to have an omni knight ban. I actually don't think that Omni Knight's necessary. You could have, like, yeah, it, it could be good to have versus the Terra Blade. Terra Blade doesn't isn't a natural way to build into the Diffusal, and he is picking up a lot more speed. I think that if you can ban out the heroes that Omni works well with, then it's the bigger problem. Because like, if you're going to be worried about a, uh, like we were talking about in the draft, we, we go into Templar Assassin. Ursa into Spearbreaker, all these guys that are going to be very dive heavy and kind of punish out the availability of your weak lanes, then that's going to be a problem. And especially if you have the all this magic ambient magic damage that Jakiro allows allows your team to have, it can kind of give you a stronger force to say, okay, make your guys all immune to physical damage. We're going to have still have spin, which is cure, and we're still going to have all of Jakiro's AOE magic damage. So, uh, it's a good thought. It's a good thought, but I feel like there's ways to get around that type of situation. It's not always necessarily good to ban the hero that you need to ban. It's the the guys that, that, that make that hero good in, in, in the draft. So, um, any any thoughts on that? Uh, any thoughts on oh, that? I, I agree, and I think with the Guardian Angel, I mean, I feel like it's easy to kite out when you have the heroes that you have. So you have an axe, you're able to call, you know, three or four people. Uh, Guardian Angel lasts for... Uh, I'm going to take a wild guess and say six seconds. Right? It's, it's five to six seconds. Uh, okay. it, it changes with levels. Uh, I think it's five, six, seven. If I'm right, I'm going to give it a double check, though. Okay. So, I mean, you have you have Guardian Angel. They throw that up. Axe calls somebody, like, half of Guardian uh, half a Guardian Angel, my hero is gone. And so the rest of your team is able to back. Um, you have Ice Path, you have all those, all the slows from, from Jakiro and Ogre going out. I feel like um, you have ways to deal with the Omni Knight. He can only repel one hero. Now that one hero could destroy your team, but it just, it really depends on what that hero is. Um, and I don't, I'm not quite sure what that hero would be. Guardian Angel lasts six, seven, and eight seconds. So okay, yeah. one more second per, per thing. And it, it's not, it is something to still worry about, but you still have Call, and you still have Jakiro Stun, and you still have all the slows and damage that are that are still getting through. So, um, it's it's an interesting thought, and it could be a, a problem. I, I personally I like Kimbrel's bands of going into the, you know you you don't want to have all these AOE guys that can sit in the back like Medusa and Sniper 
and and then he kind of took took care of all the other upfront guys that could be problems and that's the thing about drafting right you need to ban out not only the guys that are going to be like very useful in their abilities to keep their guys like kind of countering your abilities but you need to like kind of pull that out of the team and say, okay, pick that, and then we'll go around around your strategy and kind of take over your your style of play. So, yeah. Um, all right, so we're going to go, we're going to go into this Jakiro idea, and we're going to go into the, this, this draft at this point r- right now. What's, there's, even with that answered, though, I think that there's one, pro- one more problem. And I think it's Sand King, man. Like, I, I've, I was trying to go over my head over and over and over. What is the biggest problem? It's AoE magic damage. Okay, you got that timber out of there. Sand King, man. Sand King has a lot of potential here. The only thing, though, that I think that your draft destroys it is that he would have to be the offlaner to be able to do a lot of potential and get a lot of damage out on the illusions and just exploding everything. So... The only way that it could really happen is if he had a good lane. And I don't really see that happening. So it's kind of a problem if you had him as a four and he could like farm up a lot in the jungle or something. Or if he could like kind of, it was weird and you could do a try versus try, but it's almost suicide to go try versus try versus your lineup. So it's it's interesting it's like it counters your 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 draft really hard but there's no way to lane the hero and i think that's a really cool thing about your draft that it answers something that is like so innately going to destroy it at the same time um, yeah sinking would be interesting i f- i feel like his all definitely is a pain uh if and then caustic finale is an issue plus a stun uh, I mean, his stun's one of the better stuns in the game, in my opinion. Um, but I feel like once he once he initiates, if your team is able to pick up a mech or something, you're able to survive his ult and all that stuff and get through it, then I think he just kind of dies. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Because, I mean, you have the call and you have stuns to lock him down. Have your supports carry a freaking sentry ward, and then he just dies, I think. So... Yeah, if if you can, if the wombo combo isn't big enough, right? I mean, you right, have, like you gotta have the right combo. Like if he has a wombo combo that goes really well with it, then obviously that's a huge issue. Um, like warlock or something, you know? Yeah, yeah. So there's there, there's some ways to get through it. I I think that though, if you go warlock and if you were to go warlock and S- sand king, there's no real way to lane that versus your lineup. Whereas you could. With the other guys, you could kind of guarantee that the lanes would be better. And as a drafter myself, one of the thing, the most important things that I try to look for is that your lanes are going to work in general. And if you can counter the lanes a lot of times, you can counter the draft. Because you, it, it, if, you're, if you're playing lane Dota, then you need to like make sure you don't do very many mistakes. But it can be the way to counter really good teams and really good team fights. So, yeah. Um, all right, so we kind of went through the, the, the ideas of this draft and kind of ended up in a different place, but items, man. What, how would you build your team with items? Okay, so let's start off with Jakiro. I'm looking at Dindy's game, because <laughs> that's, ob- that's probably what I was going to go off of. In the ed- he went Arcanes, Mech, Solar Crest, Lotus Orb, and then... Um... Greaves? No, he didn't get Greaves. Uh, Shiva's. Um, but I think Greaves would be good. Having a Greaves would be great. Instead of Lotus, I think after Solar Crest, I would finish the Greaves. Um, and Lotus... I'm trying to see why he went Lotus. Um, Could be versus the I mean, team. Yeah, it's just... I mean, it's a good item, but I feel like after the Solar Crest and after the Greaves, after that, it's just kind of dependent on what you need. Um, I do like the Shiva's pickup. That's That's a pretty cool interaction going on with all the slows that you already have. Um, and then with Vengeful, I originally had Arcanes, but I feel like with the team that you now have, with Jakiro, you might not need Arcanes. You could go into more damage if you wanted to. You could go into Tranquils if you needed to. Um, so Boots, 
do whatever the hell you want on <laughs> Vengeful. That's the way I look at it. Whatever you need. Um, and then Glimmer, and then Force Staff. Right. Uh, I just feel like those are kind of basic on on Vengeful. Like Glimmer is always good, especially when you swap somebody. Like being able to Glimmer your way through is always good. Glimmering somebody else is always good. And then Force Staff uh, is even, in my opinion, even better than Glimmer because you swap Force Staff out, etc. Ogre, Arcanes, four Staff, and then you could put an Aether Lens if you want it. I don't really think it's necessary, but... Uh, and then a Lotus Orb on him, because he's one of those heroes that you're just kind of in the middle of everything, um, and it's always good to have. Plus, if you want to put it on your Axe whenever he, he Blink calls, that's always good to have, because uh, nobody's able to target him, and he's able to do all this damage that he needs to. Um, and then Axe, Trinkles, Blink, Blade Mill, typical build. Um, and then after that, it's whatever you need, I think. Uh, if you need another Solar Crest or Lotus Orb, go ahead. If you need a BKB or another Force Staff, uh, go into Force Staff Gaming, you know? <laughs> um, but after Blade Mill, I feel like it just kind of depends on what you need in the game, what you're playing up against. Uh, and then Terra Blade, I, I put down PMS, Treads, uh, Ring of Aquila, Manta, Pike, and then your last item can be a Butterfly, Scotty, uh, MKB, what, whatever item you really need. I think I, I like Butterfly or Scotty, um, but if you need like a Magellar or a MKB or something, then um, you shouldn't need a Magellar, but if you need something like that, then I don't see the issue of picking it up. But yeah, that's what I got for my items. Yeah. Um, I feel like it's pretty straightforward. I really like Solar Crest is like taken off. Like it was... Yeah. It's became a huge item, and I think having a Solar Crest with your Terra Blade, who's just frontlining against towers, is really good. And also having it for Axe, plus some Lotus Orb for Axe, like that's just su that's super good because he's able to blink call, not take a whole lot of damage, put out a whole lot of damage, and then you know counter any spells that are putting up being put on him if he has a Lotus Orb or has Lotus Orb put on him. So. That, that was actually another thing I was going to say about your draft, is that you could have permanent, like, it would be pretty good to build, and the only problem is that if they get, like, an early MKB, but if you got, you could get two of them. You could put one on mm -hmm. the Avenge really easily, and you could put one on Jakiro, and Jakiro would get that off a little bit sooner, but then later on, if you can kind of keep punishing them and keep giving that general push, and you can pretty much guarantee that the first, like, tier 1s and tier 2s are going to go down before probably the 25-minute mark with your whole team. And at that point, when you're going for Tier 3s, one, you're going to take Rush incredibly fast with this team. And then two, you can go up and always have a mischance. You could just stack your um, stack your mischances on top of the guy whoever's tanking the tower. Just sit there and just keep hitting it and then, you know, keep doing that move. I, it has a lot of potential just to be able to push down that, that tower and that Rax for Tier 3. So... Yeah, I think that's a really good item build. I I don't think that there's anything I would really change too much, even though a lot of the items are still the same. Four staffs are always good on every hero. <clears throat> there's a reason why it's like the most popular item throughout Dota at this point. Like in every patch, I would say since it's been inst instigated into the game, into integrated into the game, it is one of the best items that's ever existed. Yeah, I mean you could easily have it on every single hero. Like, Jakiro could easily build it. It's not, it wouldn't be odd to build it on Jakiro. And then it's not odd to build it on Axe either. And then Terra Blade already has one with his Pike. Ogre and Vinchel already have one if you get to him. So, yeah. I mean, you and I are, I think it's maybe because we're supports. I don't know. <laughs> uh, support players mostly. But, um, yeah, we have a love for four staff. Not Hurricane Pike, four staff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. I, but the, th the same thing is true right now. I mean, Hurricane Pike, when they put in Hurricane Pike, I was kind of shocked that they did that in the first place because I was like, all right, we're going to just, everyone's going to be four-staffing. Like, there's going to be a game where someone's in mid and they're going to be four-staffed all the way back to, like, Tier 2 Tower. Like, <laughs> they're going to be in, in the river and they're just going to be, like, just running down, uh, just sprinting away with, with four-staffs. But Makes Batrider, like, a hell of a hero also. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just build all four-staffs. True, true. Just get him, get that guy the hell hell away from there. And then if you have a couple blinks too, that helps. Um, so it's a really cool idea. I I I think that the Shakira kind of fills it out a little bit. I don't. 
I don't think that there's anything I would change about the items. Is, is If there is one thing that you would do to, like, let's say you got some heroes banned out here, because we didn't really talk about that. Let's let's say you got the Terra Blade either picked against you, or you got a Terra Blade, which would be silly, because you have an axe. So I don't think they would pick up Terra Blade. But let's say they, for some reason, they hear this podcast and they say, okay, we're not going to let you get a hero. Who would be the hero that you'd pick up at this point? I'm not getting Jakiro mm-hmm. or the Terra Blade. That's what did you say? Jakiro. Um, I would probably pick up Alina. I think. Uh, I feel like she doesn't do the exact same thing uh, Jakiro does, but she has a team fight. She has the uh, the low cooldown ability to stun and put out a lot of damage. Um, also, she hits pretty damn fast, and I've seen some right click builds that are really cool. Um, I, back in the day, used to go Bloodstone Deso. Uh, I, I started it versus, like, a Huskar one time, and it, like, was amazing. So I just, I built that on her for the longest time. I was, like, Bloodstone, Deso, Ags, or something like that. Uh, so, yeah, I think that would be a good hero to pick up. Um, or then you can just go with the Death Prophet. I mean, you can just kind of take that risk of having that long cooldown, like I mentioned earlier. Um, but, Yeah. I think Lena would be would be the first one though. Lena's a very strong pick. It wasn't what I was thinking, but it's 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 good. And you can get like I mean, one you get a stun, you can kind of take out the spirit breaker charge, you can have a lot of availability of just existing. She has the respawn talent, so it's not that big a deal mm-hmm. if you get ganked in the mid game as much. So there's there's a lot to what you're saying that makes a lot of sense. I was actually thinking because it's your last pick. You could maybe go for something that's a little unconventional. Okay. Is it my last pick? Is that what I had? It? The... Yeah. I have it first on my... Uh, not first pick. I just had it listed first for my items. And that's what I was looking at. But oh, okay. Death Prophet. Cool. Yeah. So as last pick, yeah. I mean, like you mentioned, something a little unconventional. Lena might actually pick or ban by then, actually. Um, right. Go ahead with what you were what you were just saying. If it's I... Shadow Shaman, I'm going to smack you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I would love to continue the tradition, and it like, did cross my mind, but I decided not to say it. Uh, the thing is, though, I think I'm going to go with actually Bristleback. I've seen it picked up a couple times in in pros. I've seen it picked up a couple times in my pubs, and it's when it's when it's the very, very last pick of the match, and you know that oh, it's like, okay, they don't counter the team. It's not like they're going to pick up any Shadow Blades on their team for on these heroes, so they're not going to get that break potential, and I can just punish out mid, because, I mean, have you, the medallion mid on freaking uh, on Bristle is incredible, man, and changing that into, what is it, Solar Crest? Yeah, Solar Crest. Changing it into a Solar Crest, the amount of damage that comes out is insane. Now, if you went for this this idea, though, you'd have to, like, last ban out the Omni, because I actually I agree with Young Terms, then you would have way too much physical damage. Yeah. But it could be really cool, man. And it's, like, something... I, I, I've been, like, itching to play Bristle Mid since I've had it happen to me a couple times now. It, it's, it's, its potential is insane. I've seen that seems people, pretty cool. I've seen people actually go, like... I'm not even joking. 7-0... and o, before the, the seven minute mark on it, if, if the matchup is exactly right, it's insane. There's actually, a, there, <clears throat> my voice just cracked a little bit. That was weird. Uh, <laughs> there's actually a lot of heroes you could last pick there. Like, just niche picks, picks like an Arc Warden. You could last pick an Arc Warden if you wanted to. Um, or Templar, I mean, Templar Assassin. Like, you could pick her up if, there, if there's nothing to get rid of her. She's already a Desto Builder. It's already somebody that. Pushes down towers, takes Roche pretty fast. Like, that's another hero. Like, there's plenty of heroes that you can pick last, especially if you have, like, the last pick. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, I like the Bristol pack. I haven't seen any of that. I haven't seen it or heard of it. I've I've, I've seen some tweets from, I think, like, Ursinity or somebody about Bristleback uh, being popular recently or something like that and the pros and how it's going to trickle down uh, or something. But I, I haven't seen any games, though, with it. So... Yeah, it's, I'm actually really interested. It's very few and far between. There's like only like one or two games, and then there's there. It's happened in my pubs a couple times as well because there's a couple people that will 
like spam that style of play because it's it's actually really strong when you have the exactly right combo. The thing is, in pubs, people will pick it up like first phase and then it gets countered really hard. Right. But its its potential is insane if you have the very last pick. It's something that I wanted to kind of sneak in there into your into your draft just in, just in case someone could pull it off. But yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting. Yeah, I just I've, I've never thought about. I mean, I've thought about putting in mid. I've put in mid a couple times, but uh, the solar crest idea is it's just uh, it seems like a lot of fun. Oh, <laughs> That's the only way to put it, I guess. It's so much minus armor, man, and then your quills do so much damage. It's insane. Um, so, all right, we kind of have to end up the 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 show at this point, we have to talk about the beer rating, but is there anything else that you want to talk about your draft, say any little nuances that are important that you need to play around, or is there like a roche time that you need to kind of shoot for? Is there anything that you, you want the, 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 the people who try out your draft to know before we get away from this? Um, I don't think so. I do think that the essential heroes are uh, the Terrorblade and... The Vengeon Ogre, I just like you mentioned earlier, that just seems like a really strong lane that, that you really can't do much about. Um, but besides that, like your off lane, you can go with whatever you need. I, I picked Axe, I felt like he was really good. Fighting into an Axe is kind of crazy unless you have the right heroes. Um, and then the mid hero, Death Prophet, Jakiro, Bristleback, like last picking a mid hero is always it's one of my favorite things because it's just. There's so many. There's so much potential. You can put. I wouldn't say any hero, but almost any hero mid, and it work out as long as you know exactly what you're going to do with it, and you have. There's no counters to it. So, um, I would say is save the mid pick for last, and make sure and try to get those three heroes that I talked about. But besides that, there's really nothing. Just essential to know. I feel like it's straightforward beyond that point. So. Okay. I don't think there's any rush timers or anything like that. I mean, obviously, you want to get uh, an Aegis on Terrorblade uh, at some point. Or maybe not even Terrorblade, it's on somebody <laughs> on your axe so he can, you know, frontline and, and call and do everything he needs to at some point. I mean, um, but I don't think there's a certain time you need to get it by, if that okay. makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. I think that there's definitely a strong, like, unless you're going versus a tri lane. I think one thing about your draft is that you should be getting a tower before the seven minute mark. Yeah, absolutely. I whether, agree on that. Whether it's Jakiro or whether it's your tri lane, there should be a, t a tower taken. And yeah. even like versus a tree, if you're going up against someone that's at like, let's say you go up against like the craziest protective lineup where it's like tree, coddle. Even with that, yeah. her uh, availability, if they go, go for that because they see your plan in the very beginning. You should have a tower by level seven, at least. Uh, not level seven, jeez. Minute seven. So, be if you're gonna go for this draft, be very coordinated. Work together very well. Don't be like trying trying to pick this up as a random five stack that you guys don't know how each other play at all, because it's not gonna work out in your favor. Yeah, so I agree. Um, you mentioned Roche. I'm gonna talk about it just a little bit. You yeah. should have it at some like an early. Uh, by the time Jakiro gets his Solar Crest, because I feel like he's probably going to get it first. Once he has Solar Crest, I feel like at that point, Roche is possible like whenever the hell you want, in my opinion. The, that lineup would take it decently. Terrorblade, if he needs to meta for it, he can. Um, but I feel like overall, like that's, once he gets Solar Crest, you should be taking Roche at some point, not long after that. Mm -hmm. And you still have, you mean you still have your Avenge? Uh, availability. You could actually have Axe and Ogre farming lanes, so it doesn't look so obvious. And then you can yeah. have Ogre b buff up to the Terraboid, you have Avenge, and then you have obviously everything that Chikiro adds to it, so there's a lot of potential that you can have just to take that guy down, and probably a matter of, I wouldn't even say, probably less than like 20 seconds uh, with all that availability for taking down Roche with minus armor. So there's a lot of potential there. I would, I, I agree with Kimbrel. You need to try to get that as soon as you can when Jakiro has that availability to help out the team because Terrorblade and Venge are very good at taking down Roche. 
So, yeah, makes a lot of sense. Okay, so now we got to rate these beers. we got to talk about them. How do you feel now that you're not hanging out and do at your bachelor party now? So now you can actually, like, taste the beer and feel it out. How do you like it, man? It's really good. It's, um, let's read some of the words on it. Creamy, sweet, uh, coffee, multi. Uh, I mean, that's all describe it pretty well. I would give it, uh, I would give it five. I haven't given it a five yet. I'm going to kind of go off of what you did, I think, last week. Uh, and I'm going to give it a five. It's really, it's really smooth, really easy to drink. Uh, it's, it's tastes really good, obviously. Um, I would have all f- the four that I have next to me, I would have them all gone. I've got to drive. So obviously you can't, you know, <laughs> drink too much, but it's, it's, uh, it's really solid. It's, and if you're ever in Oklahoma, it's, it's crafted in Stillwater, Oklahoma. It's the college town that I grew up in. Um, so if you're ever in Stillwater for like a college football game or something like that, you should definitely hit up Iron Monk, uh, so they make some pretty good milk stout. So yeah, right. we'll do, man. We'll do. Uh, so campsite, campsite. I like Upwind a lot, and there's kind of like a, a hometown, obviously love there. So you know, I, I won't, I won't hate dog on them too much. It's an IPA, and me and Kimber have talked many a times in our show so far that IPAs are just not our deal. And I. For an IPA, it's not as hoppy. It still has that hoppy taste to it, so it still has that that feel that, that you're getting for for an IPA. It's just not quite as bitter as it normally would feel. I think that, that that helps it out a lot, but it's like drinking a campfire. It's really weird. It's not hot. It's, um, I don't know, it's... It's, it's like it's like my mouth has like a little bit of ash in it. I feel like it's, it's and that doesn't sound good, but it's for some reason it kind of works because it's summer and like it'd be cool around a campfire. But since I'm just like hanging out and in my room, it's not the same feel. So yeah. I wouldn't drink this at a, at a bar. I would drink it maybe at if you're going out during the summer and you're gonna have some fun, which it is a seasonal IPA during the summer. So if you're gonna go out with your friends. Buy a campfire, talk campfire stories. It's good beer. It's good beer. But I'm going to only give it a 3.5 because it's like so specific on when you drink it. It's still good, but it's an IPA and it's only in summer. So, eh. Uh, I'm yeah. going to give it a 3.5. Makes sense. Um, real quick, next week and the week after, I will not be here. Uh, right. Next week, Friday, I have rehearsal dinner, which is insane. Because I have a wedding the next day, which is insane. I'm getting married. <laughs> um, and then, so I didn't even think about that when we decided to switch the day. I was like, you know, there's two Fridays in a row instead of just two Mondays, because I could do easily have done it next Monday. However, that's not a big problem. Uh, and then the Friday after, I will be in Alaska. So, honeymooning. Yeah, man. So I will not be here for the next two weeks, uh, sadly. But I will not sadly. That's that's a mix. Sadly, I won't be here, but I'll be I'll be happy where I'm at. You know, so I'm getting married and going on a honeymoon, so I'm pretty pretty excited for that. So that's good. That's good, man. I'm 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 uh, I'm sad that you won't be here in the next couple of weeks, but I'm happy that obviously that you and your wife, your soon to be wife, are getting married. So that's that's always good, man. It's always good. Um, glad to. Glad to have you, and I hope that everything goes well, man. And I'll see you in a couple weeks, at least three weeks. So, yeah, um, be fun. Yeah, and we'll, we'll we'll talk we'll talk more about that later. I won't grill you on camera at this point, but you know, see how you're doing with all that. Um, anyway, I'm going to close out. Uh, if you guys want to help us out, you can subscribe or like any of our videos. You can go to our Twitch channel, twitchtv toffees underscore dota two. YouTube channel is 5 Minus Gaming, so if you want to go there, you can watch it over there. You can always go to our podcast and instead of watching our VODs, and you can find them on Stitcher, iTunes, or SoundCloud. You can always find our... You can always give to our Patreon if you are feeling extra generous at www.patreon.com slash toffees. If you have any questions for me, or toffees, or Kimbrel, you can follow toffees at toffees TV. You can follow me at my Twitter, at Flubdota. And you can follow Kimbrel at skimbrel underscore. 
And you can always, if you want to, send me a message about anything, about casting, about whatever you want. You can send it to crazyflub at gmail.com. Well, it was great having a brew with you guys today. And I hope to catch you guys on Sunday for the full update. But if not, we'll catch you next week on Friday. Uh, with hopefully someone else will fill in for Kimbrel. We'll see what, what happens there. All right. See you guys later. Bye, everyone.